Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to try to find the electric field of a piece of a circle that is charged by positive charge, so we call that an arc of charge. And in this particular case, notice that the arc subtends an angle, a total angle of 120 degrees, so it's about one third, not about exactly, one third of a circle. The radius is r, and so the charge always resides exactly a distance of r away from the point that we're interested in. Now let's take a small little segment over here and let's call that a small amount of dq and so therefore the electric field at this location caused by the small amount of dq is going to be a small amount of dE and that dE is going to be equal to k times dq divided by r squared, r of course being the radius of that circular arc. Now notice that and on this DE, it's going to have a horizontal and a vertical component. There's going to be a DE in the X direction and a DE in the Y direction. And what we know about the vertical components is that all the segments on the top half of the arc will have a vertical um, component DY in the DEY in the negative direction, and all the segments at the bottom half of the arc will have a vertical component in a positive direction. And because of symmetry, they will cancel each other out, and so we don't have to worry about the vertical components. They simply cancel out. We only have to worry about the horizontal components, the DEX. And of course, if this angle here is theta, that means that this angle here is theta, which means that DEX is equal to DE times the cosine of theta. There's my little angle theta right there. All right. Now, cosine of theta, what is that equal to? Well, let's see here, <clears throat> it's equal to cosine of theta. I don't think we need to find the equivalence, and we'll see in just a moment why that is. So that means that dEx can be written as dE, which is k times dQ over r squared times the cosine of theta. That's dQ, not d theta, so you've got to be careful here. All right, now. How much is dq? How much charge is that? Well, let's see here. We have a linear charge density. Let's call that lambda. Lambda is equal to the linear charge density, which would be equal to the total charge placed on the arch divided by the length of the arch, and that would be one-third the circumference of the circle, which is two, uh, one-third. I wrote one-half, but I meant one-third. One-third times two pi times the radius, which means three q divided by two pi r is the linear charge density. That's assuming we place the charge Q on this arc structure right here. And then to find dQ, so dQ is going to be equal to the linear charge density times the arc length, and the arc length is going to be a dS. And remember, a small segment of arc length, uh, let's see here, that subtends an angle, a small angle of d theta, so this would be d theta, and so ds can be written as r d theta. So the dq on this little segment can be written as the linear charge density times r d theta, which represents a small little arc length, ds. So that can go into the equation, so we can write de in the x direction is equal to k. Instead of dq, we're going to write lambda r times d theta, so lambda r times d theta, times the cosine of theta divided by r squared, and then notice that this r will cancel out that r. Now, to find the total electric field, all we have to do is integrate all the way from this end all the way down to this end right there, or we can do halfway, we go from zero to, to theta equals 60 degrees, and then double it because, of course, the symmetry right there. So to find the total electric field, E, we have to sum up all the little de axis, and if we're going to integrate from 0 to 60 degrees, we're going to do it twice, because there's a symmetry here, so it would be this times 2, and that would be integrating this right here, so that would be equal to 2 times the integral from theta equals 0 to theta equals 60 degrees of k, linear charge density, times the cosine of theta, cosine of theta d theta, all divided by r. Now notice in this particular case, r is a constant, k is a constant, lambda is a constant, that can come all out of the integral sign, so we have e 
is equal to 2k lambda divided by r times the integral from 0 to 60 degrees of the cosine of theta d theta. All right, and that is fairly easy to integrate. We know that the derivative of the sine is the cosine, so that means the integral of the cosine is d sine. So this is equal to 2k lambda over r times the sine of theta evaluated from 0 to 60 degrees. All right, when we plug in the limits, what do we get? This is equal to 2k lambda divided by r times the sine of 60 degrees minus the sine of 0 degrees. Now the sine of 0 is 0, so we can just plug in a 0 right there. And the sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. So this is equal to 2k lambda over r times the square root of 3 over 2. Now these two cancel out. Now we're left with the square root of 3 times k lambda over r. So finally, over here we can write that the electric field strength is equal to the square root of 3 times k lambda over r. And of course the square root of 3 is 1 point, I have to figure that out. I uh, always forget what that is. 3, take the square root, and we get 1.73. So we can write this, the electric field strength is equal to 1.73 uh, k lambda over r. Now, we could, we could replace the linear charge density, which we have over here, by what is equal to 3k over 2 pi r. So if we want to do that, we get e is equal to 1.73, or we could have left it as a square root of 3, doesn't matter, times k times lambda, which we can now write as 3 times q divided by 2 pi r times r, that makes it r squared. All right, and now we can just kind of simplify things a little bit. So we take 1.73 times 3 divided by 2 divided by pi. Now let's see what that equals to. So 1.73 times 3 divided by 2 divided by pi. Okay, so now we get E is equal to 0 0.827 kq over r squared. And that's probably the best form to leave it at. Now, also, let's see here, if we want to turn that into a vector, notice that it'll be to the right, so we can make that into a vector quantity with the unit vector in the x direction, and there you go. Now, notice that this is in your typical format for the electric field, kq divided by r squared, the r squared, of course, that's the distance squared to the point of interest, and times 0 0.827, that's a constant added to that equation, and that is the, what we call electric field, due to a arc of charge at, and of course the point being at the center of that arc. If it's not at the center of the arc, it's further away, that, that becomes a much more difficult problem and that's for a different kind of video. Alright, so that's how we do this one.